In this video, I will be showing you how to navigate through Photoshop. First, let's open Photoshop. When I open Photoshop, I am greeted with this screen. But don't worry if your screen is slightly different. The welcome page changes with each update. Now, let's try opening a photo. To do so, click the File button here and click Open. To select the photo you want, Navigate to the folder you are storing the photo in and double click on it. Afterwards, you should see this screen. In the left hand corner, you will see this vertical list of tools. You will be using these tools very often when editing your photos and we will be covering these individual tools in subsequent sections. To see the name of the tool, you can hover your mouse over each icon. You will see the name of the tool, such as this, which says Move Tool. In newer versions of Photoshop, there will also be a nice little animation to show you what the tool does. This little parenthesis at the side is a keyboard shortcut for this tool. So, for example, this tool here is the Brush Tool with the keyboard shortcut B. So when I click B on my keyboard, the brush tool will be activated. If you've noticed, there's also a small triangle on the bottom right corner of each icon. This triangle tells you that there are more options under each icon. All you have to do is to right click on the tool and you'll see many other available tools underneath to choose from. Photoshop groups related function tools together and you can right click to review them and left click to select the other tools just like the selected tool. Now, if I select the pencil tool, the icon will change to the pencil as well. If I want the brush tool back, I will just right click and select the brush again. Now, let's move on to the top panel. The top panel will consist of options which change depending on the tool you selected. For example, if I were to select the brush tool, I will see the brush settings on top here. If I were to select the move tool instead, I will see the move tool settings over here. On the right, you will see various windows. However, you are only going to use this layer window over here most of the time. Note that your window may be slightly different from mine. And that is perfectly normal. You can customize what you want to see or hide by going to the Window tab over here. Selecting the windows over here by giving it a small tick will make it appear. To hide them, simply click the ticked box. So, if you do not see a layer window you need, simply show this window under the Window menu. Alright. We've covered all you need to know about navigating through Photoshop. Do not get overwhelmed by the many options available. We will be discussing how you can use the tools as we go along the course. Before we start talking about the technical aspects, let's clarify certain terms that I will be using extensively throughout the course. As you may be using either a Mac or Windows, do note that I will use the word control to refer to the control button on a Windows keyboard, and this button will translate to the command button on a Mac. When I mention the alternate key, it would translate to the option button for Mac users. However, don't fret if you can't remember this, as the shortcut buttons for both Windows and Mac will still be written on the video. Also, do note that throughout this course, I'll be using a semi full screen mode, which you can find by pressing the F button on your keyboard. This option here will give you the total full screen mode, which is not ideal for us, as you will hide the panels that we need to use. The default screen mode will look like this, with the file name shown. Clicking on this will hide the file name. So, do not be surprised if you see that my window is slightly different from yours. It's just different screen modes. Now that we've clarified all of this, let's get started. 
In this video, I will show you how to open a file in Photoshop, create a new file, and save files. We have already seen how we can open a picture in Lecture 2. To reiterate, go to File, Open, and select your photo. Now, let's say I make some changes to this photo and I want to save it after. To save this image, simply press File, Save As, and type the name you want the file to have, as well as the type you want to save it as. If you want to save it as an image file, you can choose JPEG, PNG, or any of these other options. Let's save this image in JPEG format, and let me choose a quality of 10. I will discuss more about the different types of format and their settings in section 8 of this course, when your Photoshop skills are more advanced and you're more likely to use these settings. After saving, you will be able to open the image on your computer. However, if you're editing in Photoshop and you may want to still continue editing next time, you should save it as a Photoshop document with the PSD format so that you can open this same page the next time with different layers and other settings still editable. For example, if I want to delete this text layer, I can still do so. But an image file will not have this option as it is the final output. This is the same as if you were to export your PowerPoint or Word document as a PDF. You cannot make changes to them easily. To save your work as a Photoshop file, simply select the Photoshop option here. You'll see that the extension is in a PSD format. The large document format here means the same as a Photoshop document, but it is meant for larger file sizes that are a few gigabytes in size. For small documents, simply save them as Photoshop. To create a new document, select File, New. If you are using earlier versions of Photoshop, such as CS6 and before, your screen may be slightly different, but the settings are still the same. You can select a desired width, height, and resolution. The settings on top provides a preset width and height to choose from. For now, I will just create a custom size of 2000 by 2000 with 72 pixels per inch and click Create. As you can see, a new canvas will appear. You can now do what you want with this canvas such as add a photo or add text. Once you are satisfied, you can save this document. Lastly, you can toggle between different images or documents that you've opened at the top corner over here. So, you'll be able to open multiple images and toggle between them easily. Let's talk about Zoom. Learning how to zoom in and out is very important in Photoshop as you need it when using most tools so that you can edit your photos properly. We zoom in to see more details or have more precise control over particular areas. We zoom out to see the overall image. Zooming in and out does not do anything to your image. It only affects your own view of the image. There are many shortcuts for zooming in Photoshop. But let's start with the basics, using the provided zoom tool over here. Select the zoom tool and left click on your desired area. If you want to zoom out, find the top panel, select the zoom out icon and click on your image to zoom out. Alternatively, a shortcut for zooming in would be to use Ctrl and Plus or Command and Plus for Mac to zoom out Use Ctrl and minus, or Command and minus. However, I don't recommend that you use the Zoom tool or the Ctrl plus shortcut, as they are unnatural to me. Also, because there's a better way to do it. I recommend you zoom in by holding the Ctrl or Command and spacebar on your keyboard, which will cause a magnifying glass icon to appear. Then, you can use your left click to zoom in. 
To zoom out, click Alternate or Option together with Spacebar instead and left click. To scroll through your image, hold down only on the Spacebar and left click and drag across your picture. So, you can zoom in, move around, do something, then zoom out like this. This will make your editing much faster as you won't need to let go of your mouse. This zoom shortcut is universal and you'll be able to use this regardless of the tool you are using. Do note that if you are using a Mac, command and spacebar shortcut happens to be a shortcut for Spotlight, you will need to turn it off in system preference or change the shortcut keys of the Spotlight so that you can use this zoom shortcut. This is the most convenient and easy way to zoom in and out in Photoshop. And knowing how to do this will make life much easier for you when editing your photos. Let's talk about layers in Photoshop. Layers are like canvases with transparent backgrounds that can stack on top of each other. They are especially useful because anything you do to one layer will not affect another layer. The layer window is usually on the right in Photoshop. If your layer window is missing, be sure to go to Windows here and tick the Layers option. This means that this background is my first layer and it contains this image here. You can create a new layer by going to the bottom right and clicking this icon which says Create a new layer. Alternatively, you can go to the Layer menu and press New Layer. The shortcut for creating new layers will be Ctrl Shift N or Command Shift N. If you are using the shortcut to create a new layer, Photoshop will ask you to give the layer a name. If not, it will simply put Layer 1, Layer 2, and so on. For now, let me name it as Drawing Layer. Press OK and a new layer is created. As I've said before, any changes you make to the current layer will only be applied to the current layer. So for example, if I were to select the brush tool and draw on this drawing layer here, the drawing will only be on this layer. So if I were to delete this layer, my brush marks will be gone, but the background will still be intact. To delete a layer, first select the layer before pressing the delete button on your keyboard. Now, let's undo that. What happens when I import a new picture in? Which layer will it be on? Let's try that out. I'll open a new image by selecting File and Open and moving this image to our original project. You can move an image to another by using the Move tool at the very top of the toolbar. Click on it and drag your image to the previous project like this, then let go of your click. As you can see, a new layer is created on new images and the bird is now stacked on top of this background. Next, as you may have noticed, there is a lock icon in the background layer. When this icon is present, you will not be able to move the layer around using the Move tool because it is locked. To unlock the layer, you can simply double click it. Now, remember the Move tool I just mentioned? Besides moving an image to another image, you can move your current layer around as well. So, if I click on it, I will be able to move my current background layer around. This is very useful. Also, you may have noticed these grids of grey and white squares at the back. These squares represent transparency in Photoshop. So, these are completely transparent areas. Next, to move layers front and back, like for example, if I want to move this bird behind the background, simply send this layer below the background layer. Press and drag the bird layer to below the background layer in the Layers tab. Just like that, your bird is behind the background layer. 
In Photoshop, layers on top here stack over layers below it. Moving on, let's look at this little eye icon over here. This eye icon allows you to toggle the specific layer on or off. If you were to turn this eye icon off by clicking on it, the layer will be hidden from view. You can bring the layer back to visibility again by clicking on it. This is very useful as you cannot retrieve layers after deleting them, but you can always review your layers again after hiding them. At any point in time, you can always rename your layers by double clicking on the name and changing its name accordingly. The name is simply a way for you to keep track of what the layer is for. Remember that anything you do will only affect your current layer. A good way of ensuring your edits don't disappear together with a layer, like for example, your brush drawings, is for you to paint on a new layer. This way, you can easily delete the brush stroke in the future or delete a layer without deleting the brush stroke. Layers provide a lot of flexibility and will be an essential part of your Photoshop journey. One of the most useful features in Photoshop is the ability to transform the size of your image or to rotate your image. In this video, we will be looking at the free transform function, an extremely important and useful function in Photoshop. To use the free transform tool, first select your layer. Let me select this bird layer over here. Proceed to the edit menu and click Free transform. The shortcut for this is Ctrl T or Command T. I highly recommend you remember this shortcut since you'll use this function quite often. After selecting Free Transform, this outer window will appear. You can now drag and resize your current layer. Once you are satisfied, hit the Enter button on your keyboard to save the changes. In the newer versions of Photoshop, the default will be set to scale the image proportionately, or in other words, to maintain the aspect ratio. If you do not want this, you can instead hold down the Shift button. Now, you can resize in a skewed format. In older versions of Photoshop, this is the opposite, and you have to hold the Shift to scale proportionately. Let's see how we can rotate our image. Press Ctrl T again, to activate free transform, then move your mouse to the outside of the image and you'll see this arc appear. You can then drag your image in this manner to rotate it. Besides changing the size and rotating the image, you have an entire list of functions you can do with free transform. To see these functions, press Ctrl T to activate free transform. Right click your mouse and the list will appear. Flip horizontal or vertical allows you to flip your image. Distort allows you to manipulate only one corner of your image. So, if you have a border, you can fit your image into it by carefully distorting the image. The warp function gives bubbly effects to your image. Perspective can be useful like this for you to adjust your image. Skew is similar to Distort and allows you to adjust one corner of your image. And that is all you need to know about Free Transform. But do note that Free Transform only applies to the current layer and it can be applied to anything. Let me show you an example. I'll first create a new layer and use the brush tool to draw something. Then, I can press Ctrl T to activate free transform and adjust the brush stroke. I can then rotate, flip, distort, or do anything I want with the layer. You can free transform any layer. If you want to transform multiple layers, simply hold down the Ctrl button to select multiple layers. Then, press Ctrl T and Free Transform will be activated to all layers. 
and doing will be a very useful command and you'll use it quite frequently. You use it when you want to reverse an action you've done. You can undo an operation by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z on your keyboard. I'll demonstrate this using the brush tool. I'll draw the letter 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, the last operation I did was to draw the number 4. If I were to press Ctrl Z to undo, it will reverse my previous action, which is drawing the number 4. So, the number will disappear. Now, here is where it gets a little different. If you are using the newer versions of Photoshop, such as CC 2019 onwards, you will be able to undo multiple times. So, if you press Ctrl Z again, the number 3 will disappear. Press one more time and you will undo number 2. To redo an operation, simply press Ctrl Shift Z or Command Shift Z and you will redo the operation. So, if I were to press Ctrl Shift Z three times, you will redo the number 2, 3, and 4. If you are using older versions of Photoshop, such as CS6 or CC 2017, press Ctrl Alternate Z instead. To redo, press Ctrl Shift Z. However, regardless of whether you are using the older or later version of Photoshop, there is a limit to the number of times you can step back or undo. When you click on Window and select History, you'll see a list of operations you have executed. You can also go back to a previous state by pressing one of the previous actions, and you'll see that the actions you've executed after it will be greyed out to symbolize that the action is not applied. Every time you press Ctrl Z, it takes one step back. My Photoshop keeps the latest 50 actions in my history, and I will not be able to undo beyond that. Yours may be 20 by default. You can change the number of possible step backs by going to Preference and selecting Performance. Over here, under History State, you can increase or decrease the number of states you want to preserve so that you can always step back again until that action. 20 to 50 is usually sufficient because it is likely that you will not step back that many times at a go. Increasing the number of states will require you to dedicate more system memory and system resources just to keep track of the states, which can be a big waste. So, I recommend you keep it at 20, 30, or 50.